Let's talk about this bizarre Pelosi attack situation because we we haven't had a chance to talk about it. So the suspect in that attack uh, of Nancy Pelosi's husband seems to, the guy seems to have had a list of people he wanted to get to over in their homes, according to law enforcement. This guy, David Wayne DePape, is the man accused of beating Paul Pelosi with a hammer inside his San Francisco home Friday night. CBS News reports that the suspect broke in around 2 a.m., started shouting, where's Nancy? Um, Paul Pelosi somehow dialed 911 and kind of like kept him on the phone and tried to give clues so the person on the other end could hear what was going on. Uh, the, The police were dispatched. Apparently, the alleged attacker in the house uh, what, when they got there, they observed Pelosi and the suspect holding this hammer. And then the suspect pulled the hammer away, uh, violently hit uh, Paul Pelosi with it. The suspect was immediately apprehended by police. They were there. Uh, he charged with attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, burglary, and several additional felonies. Um, A CBS News review of the suspect's social media post said that he's really into, like, uh, Holocaust denial and pedophiles in the government and uh, child sex rings and thinks that was the same. He's a nudist. Yes. Surprised you didn't see him at the beach. You know, I might have, but some guy's wearing hats. It's got to be weird. He's nuts. He's a nudist. And I think he showed up in his underwear. Mm, Makes sense. I guess if you're a nudist... But you're going to break and enter. You have to put something on. You don't want to get your balls cut on broken glass. <laughs> right. as you're, you know, whatever. Maybe they got a dog. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, you got to put some shorts on. I just like that this is the minimum amount of clothing he'll wear as <laughs> underpants. Now you're in this bizarre world if you're Paul Pelosi, who was probably, you know, went to bed at 1030 at night. Yeah. And judging from a recent DUI, maybe he likes to have a drink yeah, before nightcap. he goes to bed. And then at some point, you're standing across the hall with another guy who's also in his underpants. <laughs> and you have to have this moment of, did I break into your house? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I broke into, wait, why are you in your, you should be wearing, you know, a stocking on a your head and, a, and, and black dockers. Like, why are you in your That's underpants? By the way, question. that was just reported. He was not in his underpants. Oh yeah. wow. no! There's a, the whole, the whole, what everything that was the, reported on Friday. Uh, what is completely what, 180 degrees what is up, wrong? What is up with us? How? Why was? It's the media, you know. Well, he was a nudist. Wait, if you're a Holocaust denier, do you get the, do, do do you get corrected? <laughs> right. I think I think at that point, anything that we stick on this guy, it's just going to stay. It's yeah. a good point. Let's, get, let's be respectful to his resume. He was a nudist, <laughs> but Paul was the only one in his underpants. Uh, who's to say? It, it would make sense. It was 2.30 in the morning. I don't know who was in their underpants, but the attacker was not. That we know. It's a bum out. Pelosi's 82, though. you got to give that guy credit. Yeah, Putting that, up a fight at 82. Is yeah. really like. That's the thing that's odd. It's like the police arrive. They're both reaching for the hammer. I'm like, you couldn't. I could yank a hammer away from 82-year-old. Well, it's also the thing about like weapons is you want ones you can kind of use at a distance because yeah. the hammer when you're 82 and close. the guy's 40 and beaked up in nuts and possibly yeah. in his underpants, he can wrestle that <laughs> right. away from you. Right. It's also weird. It, it is weird how easy it is just to break into everyone's house. Like she has security and the security travels with her, but right. you would still think at the residence. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just one dude you pay 19 bucks an hour to yeah, who sit sits on front. a folding chair, just kind of keeps his head on a swivel. Yeah. For absolutely. her, for him, for, for him. isn't he, he's very wealthy, you know? Why? I think he does. Okay. I, I think he could afford. Yeah. It's yeah. A couple weird. of dogs, maybe, at the very least, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. At least an ADT sign. It's yeah. ridiculous. The guy basically got right in. Um, the website that he's super into also was the one that thought that Hillary Clinton had a body double and had died in 9-11. Well, that's true. Okay. So mm-hmm. we'll confirm that next. Um, let's talk about, oh, this is. Yeah, he was, but just so people know, he was basically a well-known kook, this guy. And he was like molested his kids and could be violent. Paul and Yeah. And didn't, you know, he didn't really play by the rules. And all I'm saying is, is whether it's San Francisco or, or L.A. or wherever, if there's enough kooks just kind of wandering about, at at some point they'll put their hand, they're going to start putting their hands on people. They're going to start pushing people in the subway. 
in front of trains and breaking into people's houses and running into stores on Melrose and just like saying like we got way too many kind of weaponized mm-hmm. kooks floating around the, for this shit not to happen more and more. The there in uh, here the there was a father and daughter walking out of Coles got stabbed by a homeless person. Yeah, because. The, the homeless population are doing a bunch of math and speed and shit that fucks them up, makes them kind of violent. And then you need protection on the street. So you need a weapon. And next thing you know, you're randomly using it on people. Yeah. Also, uh, I was thinking about not I think this guy, the Pelosi attacker guy, was kind of in and out of homelessness. But I was hearing this story. I, I meant to bring it up to you, Chris. I know it was a news publication. But really thought about this that much. We always talk about the homeless and, you know, the people, the store owners, and these guys are camped out in front of the store and it hurts business and stuff like that. But there's a whole article about kids being terrified. Mm. Like, think about it. When you were seven and there were some guys bivouacking, you know, across the street, you know, you would have totally, you would have been like, Dane's mom, <laughs> he was like totally freaked out, right? Like walking to school or, you know, encampments or shit going down or like the, the story was like somebody found it, a kid saw a dead body because the person OD'd. Like, you just, just remember looking out your window when you're a kid and seeing like dicey dude mm-hmm. like walking around. What if you just lived an entire city right. of like dicey dude right. walking around and you're four foot nothing yeah. and 60 pounds? Yeah. Like, You'd be psychologically pretty fucked up. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is definitely something that's happening. Well, and Brian, I don't know if you've noticed this with Tessa, but with my stepson, there's stuff that's like chaos in our neighborhood that like we'll drive by. He has no reaction. He's just so, he's seen it so many times. He doesn't even yeah. flinch anymore. Wow. Wow. Seven. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk Elon. Twitter's board of directors was dissolved on Thursday following Elon Musk's takeover of the company. The company filing states that all previous members of Twitter's board, including the recently ousted CEO and chairman, are no longer directors in accordance with the terms of the merger agreement. Um, that has to suck to get fired, but guess what else? The top executives were reportedly filed for cause, meaning they will not be eligible for their compensation, which would be 20 to $60 million. And the cause we've been, you know, been bandied about the how many months is the bots that they're they're over reporting how many people use this uh, social media. Musk, according to the filing, has become the sole director of Twitter. He's emphasized the need for free speech while assuring ad partners who account for 90 percent of the company's revenue that it would remain a respectable place to advertise. He did that whole let this sink in thing. Yeah. Carry to sink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If Dane had done it, I would have gone. Not his Come on. best. Yeah. But, Do better, Dane. But, but he's not a, Dane's not a rocket scientist. And, yeah, you know, but also, but also. I this don't mean is... that pejorative way. I mean, <laughs> literally. But also, Elon then posted like, hey, everybody, comedy's back on Twitter. Like, is uh, this what we have to look forward to? I also. And, and he's providing it. That's right. As a, as a guy who's done comedy, I was like, I would get a sink that read a little bit better, yeah. maybe pedestal style or something. Mm. He had like Farmhouse the encounter. Sinks, yeah, but I, I don't know why <laughs> he thought that was clever. But then I also thought he should, if you're Elon and you're doing a lot of that trolling, you know, on Twitter and getting in scraping with politicians and celebrities and stuff. Shouldn't you have a full-time comedy writer? Yeah. I mean, Paul Pelosi needs full-time security. But if you're Elon, you could get a lot of guys Dane has worked with, 250K a year. You could have that guy be on retainer, retainer, right? Every few days, somebody could send you some bullet points and a few lines here and there. Of course. Yeah. I don't know. Did someone send him the sink <laughs> gag? Is that a thing? I've never seen let this sink in. No, and then a I think guy that was from came his through musings. a door with a sink. Well, also, there's stuff coming out about him coming out. I don't know if it's true. I don't. I, if it's true, I don't know how we're just finding out this now. He's in his underwear. Thank That's you. That's what we did here. Obviously. He just runs and the whole thing in his underwear. There's so many. 
many people on TikTok and stuff going, did you know? He, I, I actually think Adam Conover, Adam ruins everything, has something about it. Could be wrong. But it's, did you know he had nothing to do with Tesla? He bought it from the founders and fired them. And then he bought SpaceX after it was already up and running. Like, we tell, we think this guy's a genius. He just acquired these companies. Fuck this guy. And like, well, why is this the first we're hearing of this? Well, I think there's a there's an argument and or campaign can be waged against anyone at any time whenever we want. I always I always think back. Think about now Republican um, presidential nominee uh, Mitt Romney. Oh yeah, Mitt Romney was. Think about him now. Like how clean and Choir religious. Boy. He's a, right. How boring and and everything else. When he was running. They had to launch a thing against him, you know, and my whole thing is you don't have to launch a thing against everybody. Sometimes some people are racist. Some people are Donald Trump. Some people have shit, but you can't just make shit up. And then his whole thing, which I still don't get to this day when he's like, what do you mean? I've employed a lot of women. I got women. I got old binders full of women over there. (laughs) Women binders. You put women in binders. They were running stories. He was like, I don't know what they thought. Yeah. I, did they thought? Nobody thought he shoved women into <laughs> binders. He was explaining that binders full of w- women's and, names that he was trying to employ. Right. And I'm just saying, like, there is a campaign waiting to happen for everybody mm-hmm. all the time, depending on what side of whoever you get on. Yeah. And if it comes... We could women in binders is enough for them to make a di- meal out of, even though that was bizarre. That, that was I a mean, big Halloween it, costume that year too, like a woman was. standing in like an accordion folder. Oh, but remember, it was so random wasn't, to wasn't me. the other story that like he and his like buddies held someone down and gave him a haircut when and, they were like fifteen? And there was a guy with long <laughs> hair in high school uh, that may have been gay, mm. but they could never corroborate any of it. They never found the guy or his buddies or whatever. And then there was, he took off with like the dog uh, leash attached to the bumper mm, of the car. Vacation. I'm just style. saying, all I'm saying is like with Mitt Romney, just go, we hate his policies <laughs> and keep going. I, you, you don't have to conjure up a, a thing where he's uh, committing hate crimes in high school and shoving women into binders. It, it's a weird thing yeah. to manufacture, but... Elon is on the wrong side of those people now, and there's going to be lots and lots of stuff coming out. But well, the advertisers will tell. You know, yeah. if people keep that going, that'll be that. But also, look, if you didn't invent the rocket company or the car company, you just figured out a way to make enough dough to buy it when you're 28 and a half. Good for you. I'll call yeah. you successful yeah, and that's... even smart. What about the people that go? His father ran an emerald mine. Of course, he had the oh, money. Oh, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I have, I've always been this way. I got, I got a ledger. There's the guy who attacked Paul Pelosi with a hammer. He's on the wrong side of my ledger. And then you have guys who employ hundreds of thousands of people and pay billions of dollars in taxes. Not problematic yeah. for me. I Not a gray I area. Don't, I don't, I'm, I can live with those guys. As long as they don't get in their underpants and attack Paul right. Pelosi. Right. On that note, so you're a big fan of big to small. I totally agree. I follow that philosophy. Doesn't he have other companies to run? Like, I have Tesla stock, and it's down quite a bit. Like, can you get back to making fucking great cars <laughs> and not fucking no. running Twitter? What are you doing? You're wasting all of our time. I think he thinks it was going a direction. He didn't like the direction it was going. And get he back to, get to the cars! <laughs> Yeah, but this is, in his world, this is affecting elections, it's affecting uh, freedoms, it's affecting, in his mind, he thinks something is wrong, and that's what you do with F me money. That's, that's right. That's now right. he's going to monetize the blue check mark. Did you yes. hear about that? Yes. Oh, my God. You're, I'm so yeah. glad you said a that. A monthly $20 charge for everybody. <laughs> There's 427,000 people with an official verified. Do the math on that. Yeah. What's $20 a month? 427,000. Adam. 20 uh, bucks. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. Four twenty, two times. So like eight four, million. Two times twenty bucks a month for uh, uh, up to four hundred twenty-seven thousand people that already are verified now have to pay, or will have to pay in November twenty dollars a month. Well, Chris will figure it out. I'm gonna lose that check mark. I can't afford that. Two hundred forty bucks a year, four hundred twenty-seven thousand um, people. That's a hundred and two million four hundred eighty thousand a year. <laughs> A hundred. This yeah, guy's not slacking. Yeah. For him, in between but. tweets, he's uh, <laughs> running some rough numbers over there. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I, I heard about it. I didn't know if they had a number set for yeah. the amount. I guess in a world where everyone pays for everything all the time, this is just one more thing to. But this pay. isn't a perk. Yeah. This is a this is a blackmail. This is something we already have. And if you want to be be mighty awful to lose that. I was looking Show at it. You know, it I'm happy to exactly. Exactly. I was thinking about it, and I was like, "Well, if I use first off, you know, I waste so much money a month, it doesn't matter." But I was also thinking, like, "Well, if I use Twitter to advertise like shows or places I'm going to be, then I get some monetary gain out of using this resource." Right. Then I was like, "All right," I was kind of agnostic about it. Mm. Let's talk Tom and Giselle. On Friday, they confirmed in coordinated statements that they are officially single. Oddly, he wrote, quote, my wife and I finalized our divorce, while Giselle called uh, him by his name, said, Tom and I have amicably finalized our divorce. The terms of child support no and alimony. She can't pronounce that word. Amicably is a <sighs> no tough way. one. I know. I think I'll do that. Uh, they're, that's all going to remain confidential. Last week, they completed the four-hour family stabilization course required of divorcing couples in many states, including Florida. Uh, the sessions educate parents about the impact divorce has on kids, which they then agreed to joint custody. You have to go through a little seminar in Florida. I don't think I don't think that happens out here. So it doesn't happen in Kansas. Well, My parents didn't do that. Every woman I've spoken to about this is very animated about he should have quit football if he wanted to continue to be married. And I'm like. First off, who are you comparing him to that you've ever met? Like, look, can we just talk about our own dads and just what they provided <laughs> sure. and how hard they worked and how much FaceTime we got with them with their $22,000 a year they made on a good year and uh, Tales of the Cheap and, you know, never being able to afford to go to a sizzler. You know, like, who are we comparing? Well, he's like, who are we comparing Tom Brady mm-hmm. to? And then... I've never met more women who are experts on Tom Brady's schedule. They've all memorized his, his in-season schedule now. It's like, he comes home, it's uh, two hours of chalk talk, he walks right past his kids, he goes right into the f- film session, then it's then he has an avocado smoothie, then he goes into rehab, and... And also, I like. I feel like I've seen lots of footage of his kids at the game and yep. things like that. I don't... I'm not signed off on the premise that he has ignores everyone in his family, talks nothing but football, and that's the reason why this thing is not working out. First off, my parents were married for about 13 years. They got mm. divorced. Not football related. Mm. No, almost, my, almost nothing to do with football. Uh, almost, I, Dad gave a few <laughs> Lombardi-esque speeches, <laughs> chalk, chalk. but that was about as close as he got. No, well, first off, plenty of people get divorced. And it has, like, nothing to do with their schedule. It's like they fall in love or, or whatever it is. Sometimes, in their case, there's lots of options because they're both super rich and, like, super good looking. But every single woman I've talked to about this is adamant. They're just dug in. He's ignoring his family. It's like, well, he he goes to his job, and then he goes home, presumably. And I, I seems like a decent dad. I... He's definitely more into football than many others who have come before him, but there's many other guys who play in the league who love their kids and are married and yeah. stuff. I, I don't I don't think it's just that, but I'm, my question is, is how are so many women experts on not only football <laughs> scheduling, but Tom Brady's football yeah. schedule? They, they all know exactly what's going on. Yeah, that I cannot speak to. And they do this thing, too, where it's like, Okay, if, if my mom said to my dad when he was 43 and a half, you've got to stop working. <laughs> <laughs> but he was making $40 million a year. I, she would have looked the other, other way for a couple of years. I think this is more of a case of how much is enough. They have more than they could ever spend. They have their family. They have all this stuff. And maybe Giselle's like, look, let's get on with our life. You said you were going to quit last time. You said you were going to quit the time before. Right. Now, like, do you want to do this or do you not want to do this? And he went home for a week and he's like, yeah, fuck this. I'm Is going she back. she's saying it, though? Like, that's my question. I, we all that's my only... know. Well, sorry. Every woman I've met knows, <laughs> knows. exactly what's going on. That but I don't I've know. not heard... Tom go, look, uh, I'm super passionate about football. It's, it's my life. And she's from a place that 
thinks football's kicking a soccer ball, and she's <laughs> not. We, we drifted apart. She's not into it. Like I've not th- heard the statements. Don't you think too? It's like with TB12. That's his company. The whole philosophy of TB12 is go beyond your years. Mm. You know, play harder, play longer. So you almost look at it and go, as he was getting up there in age, even though he was you know playing at a high level, it continues to. Maybe he looked at it like I got to keep playing because that's my brand. Oh, I am I'm, I am fortifying my brand for years to come. That like guys in their mid thirties to forty right now are looking at me, going, "Man, if he can play football that late, so maybe he reinvested to you that's know interesting. to try to get to fifty mm-hmm. to be able to say, look, you can play football all the way to fifty with TB twelve philosophy." Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know who's made if either one of them have made statements. I know it's we all picked up the narrative and ran with it. I'm sure parts of it are true, but I don't think if they have a very good, if you have a solid relationship that is solely about football and Mm -hmm. his schedule, I think there's other underlying things. I think it's weird that we just grab this one thing and we kind of sprint with it, but I'm also tired of every chick who formerly didn't give a shit about football explaining to me how football and Tom Brady work. Sorry. We can bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. I'm on my hands and knees, and I look around, and all I see are crotches. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. So I wonder who they're going to start dating. They're going to start dating. Like uh, Pete Davidson, do you think? That's the that's the, that's the rumor. That's the odd <laughs> song. <laughs> <Odds> on? <laughs> I've seen the memes, right? Yeah. Oh, is it already me? Okay, oh, it's, it's already memed out. Cooking with gas. Oh, okay, all right. <sighs> you know, the way to actually the best way to date a celebrity is you create the meme as oh. a celebrity. You push it out there. That's good. You get it into the zeitgeist. They're aware of it. And then at a certain point, it just becomes self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. It's like, well, people already think mm-hmm. we're Where they come from. I don't know. Right. I think she, my prediction is she's going to go to somebody who's worldwide known except to Americans. So mm. a soccer player, mm. uh, a European financier. That's my, that's my guess. Mm. And then is she going to have to be retired or is she going to retire? Sure as shit, better be retired. <laughs> She's Brazilian, right? Yeah. And she has Bunchen with the umlaut? Is yeah. that a, is, is that there a, an umlaut? Is that a, yes. Is that a fleeing in the Nazi camp thing? Oh, boys from Brazil. Is that a Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, that's a huh, good question. I didn't even know she had an umlaut. I saw it yesterday. So oh, that's my favorite Hanson song. Umlaut. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. But she, he, I think her net worth is more than his. That's what I heard. Which has got to be nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to be Vegas wise guys uh, tonight as you uh, hear this. Kara Top's going to be up there. Josh Wolf will be up on stage too. I don't know. Probably sold out, but there might be a few left. Dane Cook, very funny stand-up special. Above it all, streaming now at danecook.com. And for all his dates... DaneCook.com as well. Tucson's coming up. Tempe's coming up. Dallas is come. Oh, that's with John Popper, January 20th and 21st. So come say hi to that. So thanks, Dane. Appreciate it. Man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Until next time, Dan Curl, Dane Cook, Cook, and Gina Grad and Ball Brian. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.